the big news, I think over the weekend, it seems to wild people up, although why this was a surprise to anybody, why anybody thought uh, this was uh, uh, something unexpected, uh, uh, was the death of three American uh, soldiers uh, in, uh, actually in Jordan, so uh, on a base, on a small base uh, on the Jordanian-Syrian-Iraqi border. So it's a three-way border, it's a three-way spot, so pretty strategic in terms of what the United States is trying to do there. Uh, and um, it, it, it was in a territory uh, pretty sure of Jordan itself. Jordan is an American ally. Uh, you, you know, I think, uh, I think the United States trains Jordanian troops. I think the United States has a presence in Jordan. Anyway, this base in Jordan, we'll get to why it's there in a minute, um, it was hit by a drone uh, from an Iranian-supported, an Iranian-backed, an Iranian-whatever, um, uh, 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 militia. Uh, it turns out that the air defense system that the United States has that should have shot the drone down confused this drone with uh, an American drone and thought that it was an American drone coming back to base. These are the kind of errors similar to friendly fire that you expect in war, that happen in war. You can't get too uh, upset about these things in terms of the error. Uh, although I'm sure the people who committed the error will, will, it would hard for them to erase it uh, from their memory, given that three of their fellow soldiers uh, died as a consequence. Uh, you know, the Iranian-backed militias in Iraq and uh, in Iraq and in Syria have basically been attacking U.S. bases all over the region now uh, systematically, really, for decades. Uh, the the Iranians were responsible for many of the deaths that uh, the United States uh, military incurred in Iraq. I'd say starting from 20, 2006 on, uh, hundreds of Americans died because of the Iranian-backed uh, militias, uh, however you want to call them, Iranian-provided uh, uh, military equipment, uh, and and uh, the whole the whole gamut of ways in which Iran. Uh, was intervening in uh, what was going on in Iraq. Uh, this has been going on steadily, uh, again, for the, since, since uh, the, the, the United States entered Iraq uh, in, uh, in 2003, uh, and uh, Iran has been uh, trying to kill Americans systematically. Over the last few months, since October 7th, Iranians have attacked military bases over and over and over again. They've injured many American troops, but indeed they have not killed any. The Biden administration has threatened, it's shaken its finger at them, uh, that there would be consequences uh, for this, but the consequences have been trivial and minor and insignificant. Uh, Iran, I mean, look, God, Iran has been at war with the United States since uh, 1979, when they when they uh, captured the American embassy and held a 200, uh, was it? Uh, an, I can't remember the number, but they held the uh, uh, the uh, uh, embassy personnel hostage. And were only released uh, after a deal that Ronald Reagan cut, uh, but uh, but a deal where the Iranians got something in return. Iranians uh, were behind the attack on the U.S. Uh, on the U.S. Uh, Marine barracks in Beirut in 1983. They were behind the kidnapping and murder and torture of uh, of Americans in Lebanon and elsewhere in the Middle East throughout the 1980s. They were then responsible for the bombing of the Cobra Tower in Saudi Arabia, uh, which killed uh, uh, many dozens of Americans. Uh, Iranians have been trying to kill Americans, any American presence in the Middle East, since 1979. And uh, they continue to do so, and, and nobody does anything about it. Uh, uh, Trump killed Soleimani in, um, in, uh, 20, in uh, January of 2020. Uh, uh, following that, the Iranians uh, 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 you know, bombed some uh, uh, allied facilities, the facilities of, of the, uh, the, the forces, the allied forces that were in Iraq, killing three soldiers. 
the Trump administration didn't do anything. So, you know, this has been going on forever with almost no American president, no uh, military uh, standing up uh, to the Iranians, nothing, zip, nada. Biden uh, has said that there will be a response, that the response might also target the Iranian uh, Republican Guard, uh, as well as the, the militias themselves. Uh, the Republicans, uh, the Republicans, some Republicans, not all Republicans, some Republicans are urging uh, a dramatic, significant, uh, uh, offensive actions. Uh, we'll see what happens. My expectation is it'll be more pinpricks, uh, more pinpricks along the way. Uh, you know, it's stunning. Iran has been at war with the United States since 1979. We refuse to confront that war. We refuse to do anything about that war, right? Um, and, you know, uh, you know, the Houthis are stopping shipping in the Red Sea. We bomb a few of their sites and we pretend we've done something, right? Which is what the Biden administration has done so far. I expect that they will bomb some stuff. They're under a lot of political pressure to do so. They'll bomb the militias in Iraq and in Syria. They'll maybe even bomb some installations of the Iranians in Iraq and in Syria. Will they bomb anything in Iran itself? I think it's unlikely that they will actually bomb something in Iran, but it is possible. It is possible. Um, what else? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, one of the things they could do one of the things they could do that would help a number of different causes, I think, that, uh, that the United States supports is how about bombing all the manufacturing facilities in which the Iranians are building drones? I mean, Iran is one of the largest manufacturers of drones right now in the world. Maybe it's only second to China. I don't know. But they build thousands of drones. They're shipping them, selling them to Russia. They're shipping them to the Houthis. To, uh, they, they've obviously in the past sent them to Hamas. Uh, they, they're shipping them to Hezbollah. Uh, they are sending them to all the Iranian uh, you know, groups in Iraq and in Syria to attack the Americans. How about just not, not touching anybody else? All you do is you basically eviscerate every single manufacturing plant in Iran that is producing drones. Now, that would be so cool. I, I, you know, I, I think that would be so cool. First of all, it would help the Ukrainians, it would help, uh, it would help the Israelis, it would help uh, the shipping in the Red Sea, uh, it, and it would help them, the, the Americans. It would help everybody uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of the result of it, basically crippling the ability of Iran to produce and sell these drones, uh, and uh, it would uh, piss off Putin significantly and that just that is worth uh worth doing it so uh, that's what i would do among many other things i mean i would also take out their entire oil exporting facilities i've told you that's relatively easy because it's all concentrated in one place that would be relatively easy to take that out completely and if you just do two, those two things i'm not sure the iranian regime survives for very long and, well the third you have to do as well is take out their nuclear facilities like take out everything where they produce nuclear stuff right so, um, you know, uh, we will see. Uh, but those are the three things I would do. Oil, uh, drones, nuclear. You know, if it was me, let's, let's be serious here. If it was actually me, I would also take out the regime, right, from the air. Bomb all regime facilities and take out as many of them as possible. Khamenei and, and the, whole, the whole Iranian, you know, uh, power structure. And then let, let those girls, how about let those girls who, who demonstrated so bravely a year ago, let them take over the regime in Iran. That would be my solution, but I don't expect that. How about Biden, the drone factories? That's a simple one. It's not that hard. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It was a drone, an Iranian-made drone that killed those Americans. Do it. One other comment, I want to make one other uh, topic related to this, and that is the question of the, uh, the presence of Iranian troops in the region. Uh, if you remember, uh, Trump uh, promised to bring all the troops from Syria home. I mean, he made that promise several times. 
American troops are still in Syria, and the fact is that American troops are constantly being attacked in Syria. American troops are still in Iraq, and as you can see, American troops are in Jordan. The, uh, the, the, the supposed reason American troops are there is uh, to be able to take out ISIS, to, to control ISIS and Al-Qaeda and anybody else in that region. It's also the case that American troops are there. I think they're still involved in training Iraqi military or whatever. Who knows why? These are troops that are among uh, troops that now uh, that America has now in 100 different countries, all in the name of uh, dealing with global terrorism, global Islamic terrorism. Uh, we've got troops all over Africa. We've got troops all over Asia, uh, all with this idea of dealing with Islamic terrorism. I've said this over and over again over the years. Bring these troops home, particularly given that we're not willing to defend them, particularly given that we have no strategy to defeat our enemies. If we had a strategy to defeat Islamic terrorism, and these troops were necessary as part of that strategy to deploy all over the world, and we had an end date, and this was going to be a, 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 a program and a strategy, and we're going to take them out and done with it, then I'd say, yeah, keep them, that's fine. But there's no strategy. These are sitting ducks in foreign countries. Uh, they, 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 you know, they take out ISIS, Al Qaeda operatives here and there. They help the locals fight the Islamists here and there. Not a part of a broad strategy. No willingness to engage with the real villains, the ones who are really, uh, you know, promoting, funding, supporting Islamic terrorism. We pretend that Qatar is our friend, Qatar who funded ISIS, who probably is funding Al Qaeda. Uh, you know, many, many, many countries are funding uh, Al Qaeda. There's Al Qaeda in Africa. Who, where does that come from? You know, who funds them? Shall I guess? Maybe Iran, maybe Saudi Arabia, certain foundations in Saudi Arabia, maybe the Qataris, maybe the Kuwaitis, maybe some others. Where the money is, the money is in the Gulf states. So let's stop pretending that we're fighting a global war on terrorism, which we should fight because it's going to kill us. We should fight it, but we're not doing it. We're pretending to do it, and all we do is place our kids in danger and, and, and they get killed like they did uh, over the weekend for no reason, for absolutely no reason. So bring him home. Bring him home or engage in a proper war to eradicate Islamic authoritarianism. Totalitarianism, not authoritarianism, totalitarianism. 23 years ago, 23 years ago, unbelievable, right? In 2001, after 9-11, Congress passed uh, a... Uh, an, uh, a uh, Uh, AUMF, right? AUMF, which is uh, which was not exactly a declaration of war, but it was basically uh, a, uh, a, a, a an approval that Congress gave the president to do whatever he thought was necessary, deploy troops wherever he thought was necessary, in order to combat global terrorism. It wasn't even Islamic terrorism because they were afraid to name Islam. Uh, so, uh, you know, the uh, AUMF, uh, it was a, it, the authorization for military, military action. They purposely did not call it a war. I say repeal it. I'm not sure it's constitutional to begin with. Congress is supposed to approve the wars. It's supposed to declare wars. Ideally, you repeal it and declare a war on Islamic totalitarianism. You list organizations and the countries that are responsible, and you wipe them out. Yes, this was an authorization for military force, which means nothing. This should be an authorization, a war declaration, but then it has to be bounded. It has to be clearly defined who we're going to war with, and what are the goals, and how do, what does victory look like? But that's what we refuse to do, and kids are dying, continue to die, because we refuse to do it.